The tasks page is one of the most important pages in Seedleaf, and this is because it's where Seedleaf expresses all the calculations it's doing to help you plan and organize your crops. So let's get into that. So when we talk about a task, there are five tasks specifically we're talking about. Soaking your seeds, sowing your seeds, uncovering your crops after the germination process, harvesting, and packaging. So we'll take a look at each of those, but we're also going to take a look at the two different uh, views that are offered in the task page, and that is the week view and the day view. So you can see right now we are in the day view, but I'm going to switch over quickly to week view and start there. So when we do week view, it's going to show you the week which contains today's date, starting on Monday and ending on Sunday. So today is January 30th, and you can see that's the last day of our week. Now what week view does is give you an overview of all the things you need to do that week, but it doesn't give you detail. So here we can see Tuesday and Friday are our harvest days. We have soaking here on many days, sowing here on many days, and just a couple of days that have uncovering tasks. We can also see from this view that our Tuesday and Friday days are very heavy days. We are harvesting and we are soaking and sowing a lot of trays. So that's going to help us make staff arrangements for your business. Now, the day view is where all the detail is, because you can see here it says soak 30 trays and sow 55 trays, but you have no idea what those trays are. So that's where we go to day view. So let's take a look here. Again, day view automatically uh, defaults to today's date. And you can see there's actually not much to do today, just soaking some speckled peas. So let's actually go to the next day and take a look at a Monday. So on the Monday, you can see we've got soaking, sowing, uncovering, and that's it. We don't harvest their package on uh, Monday because Tuesday and Friday are the harvest days in the system. So for soaking, you're going to see the crop, the soak rate, how long it's meant to soak for, and the number of trays to soak. And it's also going to tell you what harvest date that is for. And we'll come back to that in a second. Sowing, again, shows you the crop, the sowing rate, and the number of trays to sow with the uh, harvest date. And then uncovering just basically tells you the, the uh, crop and how many trays you're uncovering. So you, that might be obvious in many ways, but it's also a good double check. If you go to uncover uh, four irregular trays and you find 10 or you find two, there's some sleuthing to be done. So that gives you an indication right away, as opposed to three or four days later realizing you have more or less trays than you need. So this just helps with a little double check. So one important feature here is the four harvest on feature. Now, when, when we look at, the, at soaking our, our sunflower today, the reason it tells us that it's for harvest on this date is because this is the last chance we have to check our orders for that date to make sure that we don't need any more sunflower or we haven't had any sunflower cancellations. Same thing with our sowing down here. Uncovering doesn't really matter because you are the, the crop is already in progress, but you can still check which uh, harvest it's for. And you can see these vary. We've got some basil in here that's not for harvest until the 15th of February, but a lot of these crops are for the 4th of February. And this is because basil is a really long growing cycle. Here, our soaking and sowing is for the 8th of February. So you can see our tasks cover a wide time range. So when we look at this, I'm going to go to my 8th February. And what it's doing is taking us to the orders page, which is filtered by that date. And now I can go through each of these orders check to make sure they are as I want them to be, and if there's any changes, I will make them. Seedleaf will update your tasks, and then when you do your soaking or sowing, they're going to be up to date. You simply click on a order. If there's a change that you want to make, great. Uh, if not, so if you don't make a change, uh, I just need to do this, you're going to hit the back button, and that's going to take you back to your filtered view. And if you do make a change, let's say we go from uh, the one, not two, but four sunflower and we save, we're going to do this and following orders, or you could choose just this order. That's actually, let's just say it's just this order because they've got a special event for that date. We're going to confirm. So now you can see it's actually taken me back to the general orders page, but if you hit back, 
It'll take you right to your uh, filtered list again there. So that's how you double check there with your tasks. So let's go back to our tasks, go to the next day. And we would do the same thing here with, with these. So generally when we check an order, we can get a sense of any changes to that order. So it would apply to all crops, but you can always double check as you do each one. So that's tasks. What tasks are doing are taking your seeds, crops, products, and orders and creating sowing, soaking, uncovering, harvest, and packaging information for you to use to, uh, you know, it's all your calculations and this is what's going to help plan your week. Let's take a quick look at uh, what a harvest day looks like. So on harvest day, there's two more tasks here that are broken down. The first is the harvest, which breaks down the crop, how many trays you're going to harvest, and what your total expected yield is. So with sunflower, you can see we have 10 trays to harvest and 6,500 grams or 650 grams per tray, which is what we put in as our expected yield in the crop section. So this is fairly straightforward, just gives you an overview. And again, if you end up harvesting eight trays or 12 sunflower trays, you're going to want to do some sleuthing to figure out why that is. Now, when it comes to packaging, packaging is broken down by your small, medium, large sizes, as well as trays, and of course, your uh, product name. And you can, as I've talked about in other videos, you can have special naming. So you could have, uh, we, here we have our kohlrabi clam and we need two large ones. And then here we have our kohlrabi clam for choices specifically, and we have 10 small ones. And this is a special product I made, which has a special label just for this grocer. Now I could have one that says kohlrabi clam extra large as well. And that's an extra large size I added, which is beyond the small, medium, and large that become built that come built into seed leaf. So the summary is here. You've got all your um, you've got all of your uh, small, medium, and large packaging there, as well as your trays. So it's really well laid out for easy uh, easy organization come harvest time. So that's how tasks work. Once again, it's a really important aspect of seed leaf because it's where all the calculations that seed leaf is doing are expressed. There are some double checks in there. So before soaking and sowing, you can make sure your orders are all up to date to make sure those numbers are accurate. And it also allows you to double check throughout the cycle to make sure the number of trays you're expecting are actually the number of trays that are growing.